Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast, and we're going to look at some tournaments today. So we've missed this part out of the last monthly meta, and the reason for that is because actually there's so many tournaments going on that we thought actually it was very difficult to pick. But you guys have put in the comments for that video saying that actually we missed that bit, we like that bit. So as a way of an apology, and what we're going to do is just have a look at a few tournaments some tournaments that happened and four tournaments that are coming up in the next month. Now, if there is a tournament that you are going to, that you're planning in the next couple of months, please drop us a message below and we'll do a little video or put it in a video or something like that because the idea is we want to push tournaments. Now, as I've gone through and looked, I've tried to pick out some tournaments that are about three or more weeks away so that they are probably not fully booked and that you can probably still uh, plan time to get to. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more tournaments, if you want to see more focus on tournaments, then let us know what tournaments are going on out there. So let's have a look at a few tournaments that have happened and then we'll look at some coming up. So the first one we're going to look at today is Schnitzel Bowl 2021, which happened on the 31st of July in Wien, 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 Austria. Really sorry. So the reason I know about this one is one, it's on the NAF website. I know, not very surprising. But secondly, and I think this is really cool, so we've got to do this properly. Uh, Gottfried uh, Freisler, Freisler just wanted to comment to let you know that I won the NAF Schnitzel Bowl 2021 in Vienna last weekend uh, with a Lizardman team, six Bloxaurus, a Crocs, four Skinks, three rerolls, and Apothecary, 1.15 million. Uh, with a bunch of SPP for skills, so happy. So Gottfried, congratulations! I know it's a bit of a, a bit of a spoiler there, but let's have a look at the format. So it was one day, three games, 1.15 for everybody, no stars allowed, which is really quite interesting. So we'll look at some of the other teams that did well in this event in a second. Uh, SPP buys, so tier one, 36 skills, so 36 SPP, six SPP a pop, that's six blocking Saurus. That does the trick. Uh, 48, uh, 48 SPP for Tier 2 and 60 SPP for Tier 3, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, skill stacking was allowed, so I can imagine you had some fun Underworld teams there. And Tier 3 with 60 SPP probably had some mighty trolls. Um, it's an interesting format. That one with no stars really does kind of hurt Tier 3, but at least you get to play Blood Bowl with the teams as they are. So actually quite an interesting one. Um, we are seeing this, and you guys will know this if you watch the monthly meta, there's a bit of a divide there in tournaments between with stars and no stars, with the middle ground being that Highlander rule. So Schnitzel Bowl was won by Lizards, by Gottfried, but let's have a look. Uh, second place was Skaven. Most touchdowns were Skaven, and most casualties was Dark Elves. Hey, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised by this, but in the land of no stars and the land of low skills, Tier 1 teams do pretty beautifully. Now, Lizard, Skaven, and Dark Elves have got to be up there in the best teams in the game without stars, and I think that's really interesting. So it's quite cool to see the old stalwarts do really well. I'm kind of pleased not to see Chaos Dwarves in there, who have been doing superbly at the moment. But then maybe that's down to Hack Flem. I mean, Chorfs are not bad anyway, but maybe that Hack Flem really pushes them over the line. No Hack Flem. Skaven, gutter runners doing gutter runner things. Elizabeth's being lizards and Dark Elves just absolutely murdering. I wouldn't be surprised if Sir Twist 089 didn't take a couple of assassins there to really capitalise on that low armour that you tend to see in tournaments at the moment. Honestly, Dark Elf Assassins, they're a sneaky good pick at the moment. So that was Schnitzel Bowl. Let's have a look at the next one, which was the Prague Bowl Quick Snap 8. So one day, three games, 1.1k, like 1.1 million here. So really low cost. I like this. This is what we ran at Bonehead Bowl. Tier 3 are the only tier that are allowed stars, which is quite interesting as well. And the skills uh, were based on allowance. So Tier 1 got 6 primary. Tier 2 got 6 primary and 1 double, and Tier 3 got 6 primary and... Oh, it's 2 doubles, I think they got. Um, and, no, no, it's 1 double, but you could swap a primary for 2 random primaries, or a double for 2 random doubles, which is actually quite... And when I say random, I mean random rolls. The other thing is that Tier 3 got an extra 20k or an extra skill chucked in there as well, so... We're seeing that little bit of a bonus there for Tier 3. Now, in this kind of event, Tier 1 and Tier 2 being basically 6 or 7 skills and at a 1.1 build with no stars, that's really interesting. Okay, again, we're likely to see things like Dwarves uh, and Dark Elves. I mean, 6 skills is a decent amount. 6 skills for a million is a pretty decent crack for Lizards and things like that. Tier 3, however, with stars and, you know, potentially 6, 7, 8 skills if you're willing to take a couple of um, 
I actually really like the idea of taking a couple of random doubles for just a couple of like goblins or something. You know, get a couple of blocks and you're absolutely away. Anyway, let's have a look and see who did well. High elves. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. Now I have prepped all this and I have seen this before, but I was not paying attention. So that's genuine surprise. Right. High elves. High elves. High elves are a team of legends that I think are a little bit underrated. We're seeing some great stuff from the teams of legend and some of that is going to be based on the fact that the people playing them are potentially the people who've been playing them for a very long time. But also, they might just be a little bit under-costed in some ways. K Tomb Kings do well, Chorfs do well, High Isles do well, Blue and Milton and his Norse do well. Interesting one. So, uh, Matthias winning that one with uh, High Elves and then Vampire winning with Undead. That's confusing. I might have to see if I can get a new NAF name, like Underworld or something. Underworld Denizens as the NAF name, just to confuse people. Uh, most touchdowns was Vampire with his Undead, and most casualties was Orcs with uh, Grom just bringing home the death stats there. Really like that. Now, Prague Bowl, quite an interesting one. Quite low TV and low variance, and it's nice to see those kind of tournaments. We've seen some wacky star player ones, but to see Blood Bowl kind of distilled down a bit is interesting. And the last one we'll look back at before we start looking ahead is the Zandri Dust Sevens tournament uh, for July. Now, that actually had a much larger name. Uh, it's the FFBBL Zandri Dust Kemri Recruitment Sevens Open July 2021, which is a cool, cool thing. So these guys do lots of Sevens tournaments. So one day, five games. It's Blood Bowl Sevens. I'm already excited. So TV, 600k. No stars allowed because it's Sevens. Skill-wise, they've gone with this build. I love this build set. A captain. Okay, the captain gets the leader skill. Anybody can take the captain skill. That means they get leader or they can swap it with a primary. Okay, so you don't you take away that variance of like, okay, uh, undead can't get doubles, so they can't get leader. No, absolutely. I like this. There's a lot of sevens tournaments, and I think we'll see one in the future in a second, that ban leader. All right, they're ban leader, ban pro. The other way of kind of going into it with sevens is just being like, you know what? people are going to do it so let's just lean into it give them a captain and then if they want to just drop it down for another skill they can and that's what we've got here so the captain plus tier one get one primary tier two get plus one primary and one double sorry secondary and tier three get plus one primary and plus two secondary those secondaries can be swapped for primaries so potentially tier two team could have the leader skill a regular and a double all underworld underworld in sevens here what are we looking at? Ratoga, Blitzer, Thrower. Oh, you don't get the Snotlings. That's interesting. No skill stacking allowed. Um, what would I take for this? You know what? High Elves with three skills. Leader, uh, dodge on a Blitzer potentially to do the stuff, and or maybe just block on a bit. I don't know. There's some cool builds here. There's some cool builds like this one. And because this one took place in the past, we've got a roster of winners and it was Nurgle. It was flipping Nurgle that won a sevens tournament. So first place to House Blackfire with their Nurgle team. Rocking it. Nurgle tier two. So the leader skill is useful for them. Um, they're hampered by, they're hampered by rostered positional. So that is good work there by House Blackfire. House Blackfire, if you're listening, please drop us your roster or if anybody else played in this, drop us your roster because I'm interested now. Uh, and uh, Kesh DR with humans taking second place. Most touchdowns are going to Renegades with Buzzard. Now, Renegades and Sevens are fantastic. They're so, there's such variety. You can go uh, all Kaiju. You can just do so many different builds. I think that's wicked. And with three skills, one of them being double. Yeah, that's, that's, you know. Oh, hello, Block Minotaur in Sevens. Ah, Sevens. I miss Sevens. Anyway, and most casualties to Orcs again. Orcs are smashing face at the moment with Be Good. Be Good was very good. So now we're going to have a look at four tournaments that are upcoming. And the first one we're going to look at is a two-dayer. So the Red Trophy 5, which is going to be taking place on the 21st and 22nd of August in High Wycombe, UK. Two-day, six games. We've got a proper tournament on the go here. Okay, TV for this event, 1.2. Now, if you watch any of our tournament videos, we've got 1.1 build and 1.2 build because we kind of thought, actually, it's going to be between 1.1 and 1.25. So you can flex... There's a ton of awesome builds at 1.2. Now, this one, however, no tiers. You either get six primary or, uh, sorry, you either get eight primary skills across your team or six primary plus two doubles. Uh, they can stack 0 to 2 per player. And that is it, basically. This is a really, it's, it's a potent build. It's vanilla, but it is potent. Uh, oh, it's five primary. It's five primary and two doubles, sorry. Um, it's interesting. 
it's interesting. I, I, hmm, okay. Um, are we going to see uh, Amazons with eight normal skills? Are we going to see a ton of bludging Amazons? Dwarves, again, will do well, but 1.2k is wasted. If stars are able to be taken, who are we going to see do well? Amazons can take a pretty decent star at that point and then flood the board with skills. Chaos Dwarves are going to do really well here. That's a ton of guard. That's some cheeky sure hands. That's some block. And 1.2, you can fit Hack Flem in there as well. Um, yeah, all right. There's a couple of really good builds you can pull up. 1.2 is a really sweet spot if you're not buying skills because this is realistically a tournament that's going to be, uh, I mean, a minimum of 1360. Um, this is a, a big, I say this is a big boy tournament. It's not. There are some tournaments out there that get up to 1500. But this here, 1.2 with eight skills is pretty big. And I like this. And it's a two dayer, which is going to be awesome. So I'll be keeping my eye on this one because this is going to be really interesting to see when it comes down to results. Who did well? Next up, we've got War and Magic, which, ugh, what a wicked name for a Blood Bowl tournament. Uh, 22nd of August in Antiquera, 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 Spain not spanish uh one day four games um low tv here so tier one teams at one million and fifty that's it one million and you get a little bit more than you would normally in league tier two 1.1 and tier three 1.15 uh tier two will be fine with this one um inducements tier three are the only ones who can get inducements and there are bonuses so each of the tier three teams get a little bit of a bonus here so goblins get two bribes halflings get a free chef and ogres and snotlings get um, rookies as well. So, oh, it's interesting here. Um, that's really interesting. Now, when it comes to that, I mean, that's low TV. And I think that's a, a pretty cool thing at the moment. And that's the great thing about these tournaments is you get a variety. So 1.05 is pretty low for the tier one teams. Um, so tier three is looking pretty sweet at this point. You get basically 1.25 with your bonuses. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. 1.15 Snotling build with Hack Flem and a free riot as rookies. I managed to go 2 1 1, so actually, it's, it's pretty potent build. Skills wise, uh, six primary, six primary, and one secondary, or six primary and two secondary, so eight skills as well. I think Snotlings and Underworld might do well in this one. I do like the Snotling build for here. 0 to 2 stack, per, uh, 0 to 2 stack as well, so you can take your block guard. Uh, or block brawler troll don't do block don't do block and brawler what are you doing ben anyway interesting one here i'll be looking forward to seeing the results of this as well because actually tier one is a bit penalized and that is nice and i thought this one was pretty clever too so on the 28th of august in fountain colorado usa we've got one day three game event 1.1 million no tiers again people apparently not enjoying the tier system um and They've gone heavily into the fact that you get Bloodwiser kegs and prayers to Nuffle, which is pretty cool. So inducements wise, all inducements are half price. You get a free keg for every team and you get a free prayer to Nuffle at the beginning of every game, which is actually really interesting. Um, free prayer to Nuffle from page 103. So that's from the exhibition one. Um, and then you've got a few different skill packages to choose from so your team is just 1.1 million no matter what you're running you can take eight primary four normal and two four primary and two secondary or two normal and three secondary so basically you can take eight skills six skills or five skills with the amount of doubles going up now you've got to think at 1.1 something like amazons or dark elves who don't need a lot of skills now 1.1 is a pretty lovely place for dark elves to be especially with an extra 160k that basically takes you to one point you know that's that's 1250 land and when you're dark elves 1250 is a pretty wonderful place to be you know you've got leader on the leader on the runner if you can't afford to just actually hard buy it you should have one to two of your witch elves by then probably one witch elf uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good build actually. And look, think, working on the Dream Teams um, videos at the moment, especially for Dark Elves, 1.25. It isn't a lot, but it is enough, which is really interesting. So this will be a good one as well to see how it lands. Again, it's great to see the different varieties. Lack of tiers, going to be really interesting. And we've got to wrap up this with a sevens tournament. Uh, the next one I could kind of see. So 22nd of August in Soto del Real, Spain. Again, not Spanish. My apologies one day six games now this is really cool this is an all day one so this is a 9 a.m start so 8 p.m finish with a break in the middle when a, when the world gets too hot i love this four games in the morning then you go off have some food come back a little bit later and play the last two games 
man, I just cannot think of anything better than playing a whole day of Blood Bowl 7s in the Spanish sun. Like, this is, I think this is like, my future, I think I'm going to have to try and get over to Europe and just have a really lovely sunny Blood Bowl tournament. Anyway, it is 7s, so it's quite interesting. So 600k build, which is normal, no leader allowed. There are five tiers. So it's interesting to see when we get tiers added. So we'll go and have a cheeky little look at the... Come on, mouse, you need to be a little bit quieter than that. A breakdown of the tiers. So tier one gets one primary, tier two gets two, tier three gets three, tier four gets four, and tier five gets five. So tier one, human, skaven, orcs, amazon, dwarves, wood elves. Tier two, lizards, chorf, norse, undead, elven union, dark elves, and underworld. Underworld and Elven Union kind of being bumped up to match up with Lizards, I think is probably about right, especially for Sevens. Tier 3, OWA, Necromantic, um, Chaos, High Elves, Black Orcs and Nobles. Interesting, High Elves are going to overperform as our Necro in that one, which I like. Uh, tier 4, Kemri Nurgle, uh, Chaos Chosen? Oh, that's Chosen, so Chaos Renegades must be Tier 3. Slan, Corn and Vampires. Uh, that's that's quite good. I mean, sevens with four skills on slam. I'll take that. Uh, tier five: uh, goblins, halflings, snotlings, ogres, lizards without saurus, underworld without skaven, black orcs without black orcs, and zombies and skeletons, which is wicked. So you can run an all zombie, an all an all zombleton roster with five skills in sevens, which is pretty interesting. Uh, tier 5 also gets an extra bonus. They'll be able to hire one additional positional. They will receive one bribe or one free apothecary at the choice of each coach. So that's quite interesting. Not sure how that's going to work with zombies and skeletons. That is a bit of a shame. Um, we've got undead. We've got that. Yeah, that is a bit of a shame. That's interesting. So you can have the extra positional. So you can have underworld. Oh, you can have underworld with a big guy and four snotlings. Yeah, all right. That's my roster here. Oh, Snotlings with five positionals, actually. All the swarming. One troll, one pump wagon, stilty. Yeah, all right. Oh, it's really good. They've got some good... That's that's fun. I like that. That's a lot of stuff for sevens. Uh, Max with one skill per player. Leader cannot be taken. Um, and then the reduced stuff there. I love it. And actually, the way they've done this tournament is really cool. You Five, uh, five euros, you get, a, you get a sevens pitch as well, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to put a little video out with some of the tournaments that are coming up because you guys have said that you quite like seeing what's coming up. And hey, I'm happy to talk about Blood Bowl. So anyway, I'm going to bail now. Have a lovely day. Do let me know in the comments what tournaments you've got coming up that you want us to have a little chat about because, ah, oh, this is just so exciting. This is one of my favourite things. Uh, I love League. But I love Narrative. I love Blood Bowl. I love Sevens. And actually... I do love the competitive element here because there's so much meta. It's just phenomenal. You know, there's there's like 17 different ways to play Blood Bowl and they're all great. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon, uh, link below, where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.